Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for the blessings that we have in Christ. Lord, I want to lift up to you the backside, Churchill, that you would draw people onto yourself to know that you are the ultimate prize, that there is no better uh, place to stand than in the winner circle of heaven, not because of our own merit or the good things that we've done, but because Christ has run the race for us. So Lord, may your Holy Spirit go forth and open eyes and may you bless this day. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the backside's a very demanding place. Uh, you know, you, you get up at five in the morning, uh, you work until sundown, uh, you know, you've got your horses you take care of. They, they become your gods. The population is dense. They're all packed into a small area and uh, everybody knows each other. They're, they're not able to get off the track and to go to a church of their choice, given the scheduling, given, given the fact that many of the people that we're ministering to uh, don't have transportation. And that's what the chaplaincy's vision is, is to bring Jesus and God to the racetrack. The racetrack chaplaincy started 50-some uh, years ago. Uh, actually, there was a, an, in, an individual, his name was Salty Roberts. Uh, he realized that it's seven days a week that they couldn't get off the track and to go to a church of their choice. And, uh, and so he had a real burden on his heart for those people. Salty's vision then, and was until the day the Lord called him home, was that there would be a chaplain ministering to the people that make up the great sport of horse racing all over the world. One of the ways that we like to put it is that we like to be a friend to them, try to be a friend to them, making sure that the horsemen know that there's somebody they could always come talk to, come see, not that there's someone here for them. We call it a ministry of presence. You know, Christ said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord, love your neighbor as yourself. And we try to live that out. That, you know, our mission is pretty simple. Uh, to, is to be able to take the gospel to the horse racing industry. We're the ambassadors for Christ to the horse racing industry. Well, obviously hearts are being won and lives are being changed. Uh, people are being set free from the bondage of drugs and alcohol. You know, the, the backside of Churchill Downs and, and any racetrack has all the problems that are prevalent in society. Uh, you know, it's kind of a cross-section of society. You have the very, very wealthy and the very, very poor and all the problems that society experiences, we have back there. And I think that the great thing about it is I've seen a lot of life change. I became a pastor to see that life change, to see those lives change, to see new creations in Christ. And we see that all the time in the racetrack chaplaincy. Uh, you can't help but it being impacted when you see somebody getting baptized, baptized in a horse trough, <laughs> and you know, and then and then they become a new creation, or they 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 understand the gospel for the first time. Just to be honest with you, when I come here, I feel like family. I love this church because it's small. I was raised in a small church, so it's my place where I can come and I can know everybody's name. Souls are being saved, lives are being changed. I think that the secular world could look in and see that God's moving. I've been in and out of the drug scene, the alcohol scene, and uh, it's meant the world. I mean, it's really meant the world to me. So right now we have about 36 senior chaplains across the country covering about 49 different facilities, uh, both in the United States, Canada, Puerto Rico. We also have some international chaplains that we support. And what we've discovered over the years is that the demographics of our workforce have changed dramatically. Over the last 30 years, it is uh, that level of worker used to be uh, black. Today it's Hispanic and Spanish speaking, so uh, all of our chaplains are bilingual. Hebreos 12 dice, dejemos también a un lado todo peso y pecado. Anything that we do, we want to do it to the glory of God. And that in itself is fulfilling because that is the purpose of every single person, um, to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Where the chaplain is in place doing the work the Lord has called him to do, bringing hope through the cross of Christ, endeavoring to meet some of the physical and material needs, uh, being a visible presence on the backside, uh, cultivating relationships and ultimately sharing the gospel message with them. 
uh, all of those negatives are significantly less. We know that we're going to, that a chaplain's presence on the racetrack is going to exponentially uh, make it, the environment better. The horse racing industry looks upon us as a very valuable resource and asset to them. When we raise up the quality of the life of the worker by meeting some of their needs, by sharing a gospel message with them, by, by being there to listen and to hear and to help and to assist, it, it, it raises up the quality of that workforce and subsequently it raises up the quality of the product. We all know the mission, we all know exactly what our calling is, and we try to complete it each and every day. It's, it's, we're in a climate um, in America and around the world where uh, it's not in favor to be a Christian anymore. Um, and that's, you know, that's sad, but it's also an opportunity. And I think that there's a spiritual awakening happening. It's an exciting time. I think it's an exciting time to be a Christian. I know times are turbulent, times are difficult, uh, but I believe there's, there's no greater time in the history of mankind to be alive, to know and love and trust in the Lord and be a tool in the hand of the Lord uh, as, as He goes about bringing in the harvest. Yes, one day we will die, and yes, one day we will go to heaven, but the Lord has things for us to do in between. And it's in doing what the Lord would have us to do that we really experience the joy of the Lord. Uh, I'd heard a song one time that it simply said, don't tell them Jesus loves them till you're ready to love them yourself. And that's what our chaplains and, and the chaplaincy is all about, loving the people right where they're at uh, with the love of the Lord.